Hello again, part two, fast traveling. So I'm going to, first thing I'm gonna do is in the project settings, I'm gonna set a new input. Close, close, close. New action mapping. This will be fast travel menu. And I'm going to set it up to R key. Now inside the player blueprint, In the event graph, this one is not near as messy as the other one, but it still needs some cleanup. All right, so I'm going to add my fast travel menu action event. And I'm going to add a variable, FTS open, question mark, fast travel screen open. It'll be a boolean that is not an array, singular. So I'm going to add a branch. So if the fast travel screen is not open, then we want to create our widget of the fast travel screen. Oh, the statue ref doesn't have one. Did we actually even use that? Or did I just waste y'all's time? Yeah, it's not even it's not even really needed. So we can just delete that, compile that, refresh that, and then there we go. Alright, so we'll promote this to a variable called fast travel ftw underscore w fast travel widget widget we'll add it to the viewport then we'll back this up just a little bit and see if it's a valid reference. I clicked record, right? I did, I did click record. Hook the false to the is not valid so that if it's not valid we create our widget. And if it is then we just add it right back to our viewport. Then at the very end we'll set that our fast travel screen is open. Get our player controller Set our input mode to game and UI, the UI being the widget. Then we will set show mouse cursor. Just like that. Then on the flip side, okay. On the flip side, we will remove this from parent set that our fast travel screen is no longer open get our player controller again set our input Ow. mode back to game only sorry and then we'll set show mouse cursor back to false did I set it I set it true there okay All right, so now when we're just running around the world and we're like, I need to fast travel back real quick, we can open our menu. So I've got that one, and I've got that one, and now when I'm out in the field, let's say I finish my quest and I don't want to schlep all the way back to the to the town or wherever you got it, I can just teleport to the high highlands. Okay. Something I'm going to do real quick. Fast travel point. I'm going to get that that spawn point. And I'm just going to rotate it like that. So that when I fast travel. Statue ref never longer exists on create. Okay. If you have that issue. Then you just need to refresh that node. So I'll open that one. Activate that one. And then when I teleport, then I'm facing away from the statue. Or you can have him face the statue, or whichever direction you want her to face. So there is one... This one turned out to be a short video. So let's update the save system just real quick.
So, because if we load in and we've already activated a bunch of save points, then we want to be able to keep track of those. So, where's my save system? We need to add one more variable in here of our oh, activated waypoints. And it will be a reference to our fast fast travel blueprint object reference also an array since we have many that we'll have so now over in our game mode that's where it is blueprints game mode that's where we have our uh, save and load system so when we save, we're casting and we're setting the variable. So let's set that one up. So we'll, from our save game, let's set activated waypoints. And from our player reference, we will get activated fast travel points. And hook that up just like that. Drag it to the bottom. And we'll disconnect the save game to slot and move it to the very bottom because we want it to have all the data so the save game slot needs to be the very last thing ever done. And now when we load, we want to reload all that onto our player. So we will get the activated waypoints on the load side. And Okay. If, if you add a pin and this just disappears, just scroll out, scroll back in. It should come back. So let's set activated fast travel points. Hook that to here. Hook this to there. Grab both of them and we'll move them all the way down. Now there is one thing that we need to do to our fast travel points. Because when we load, we'll have the information on our player, but the actual statue won't be activated. So what we can do is right here at the very end once we've added it I'm inside the fast travel blueprint this dude so at the very end where we're turning on the torch let's create a custom event called relight and we'll just hook it right there to that so that inside our third person game mode right here we can do a for each loop and call our relight function. So now just to show you, so let me activate both of them. Boom. And boom. And now I'll run over to this statue and save. That way I'm far enough away from both of them. So I'll save real quick. And now when I jump back in, they're both off, but I load my slot, and they're both back on. And I have all my, my waypoints. Hooray! So that's clearing all that up. That's the fast travel system in place. And in the next one, let's start working on a level. I'm going to warn you now. I'm not very creative when it comes to actual level design, but I know how the tools work, if that makes sense. So I I don't know if that's coming across. Like, I, I know how to make a level. It just takes me a long time to make one that actually looks good, because I'm not very imaginative. But I know how to get the tools going so I can show y'all how to do it. I'm sure y'all are a lot more creative than I am. So look forward to that and the next one, and I will see y'all there. Bye-bye.